following is a production of Cary TV, the town of Cary's government access channel. We are calling to order the uh, Planning and Zoning Board meeting for June 19th. We have a small board today, only five members, so uh, a few of our folks, I guess, are uh, out for the summer, at least temporarily. But we'll move ahead now, starting with, of course, adopting the agenda. Uh, if anyone has any changes to the agenda, just speak up. Otherwise, uh, I would like a motion to adopt. So moved. Uh, do I have a second? S second. All those in favor of adopting the agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Motion carries unanimously. We will now be looking at the minutes for the regular meeting of May 22nd. And uh, once again, if anyone has any changes, edits, or modifications to those minutes, please speak up. Otherwise, I would look for a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. A second? Second. Mirror image. And all those in favor of approving the uh, minutes for May 22nd, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no, please. That motion also carries unanimously. Uh, we have uh, two cases this evening that have public hearings, so I will briefly walk uh, you through the process for the public hearing. First thing we will do is hear the case presented by our staff member. After the staff member is finished presenting the case to us, the public hearing will open. The first speaker at the public hearing will be the applicant, who will be entitled to 10 minutes. After the applicant's presentation, then the public hearing is open to those of you out there uh, in the audience, and you can most conveniently come down that uh, aisle over there. If you would fill out one of the cards that we have up there uh, in the little trays behind those seats, the four seats that are in the first row, and then hand one of the cards to the clerk, that would be quite helpful. At that point, you will then uh, please come to the left-hand side podium, not the one with the computer monitor, but the other one. When you're at that computer or at that podium, uh, you will have five minutes uh, to speak, and once you um, once you begin that little timer there, that little device with the three lights on it will shine green. You'll get a green light for four minutes and 30 seconds. You'll get a yellow warning light for 30 seconds. And then you'll get a flashing red light, at which point I will very quickly ask you to, uh, to wrap up and, and end your comments. And I do that because I want everyone to have the same amount of time. So uh, not meaning to be rude, but we try to adhere to that five minutes pretty, pretty strictly. There's not a big group here this evening, but if there, uh, there are a bunch of folks by chance who, who wanted to speak on, on a particular issue, if you would sequence your comments, not be repetitive, um, it, it would allow you more time to make more points to us. And you just simply have to identify that you guys are all together and we, we'll figure that out. But rather than having, having the same thing said over and over again, it makes a, a little smoother meeting. Plus it also, like I said, gives you the opportunity to to have more time to put in new topics rather than, than uh, repeating things. And please, uh, when you do uh, present your comments, please present them to us. We will not interact with you. We're just here to listen at that point. Uh, we won't ask you any questions, and so don't ask us any. We're, it's not a back and forth. It is really a hearing, and we're going to be doing the hearing. And um, once you're done, you can go back to your seat whichever way you want. After the everyone has had a chance to speak, and everyone will, if... Um, there are no more speakers. We close that public hearing. We then interact back and forth with the staff and possibly once again with the applicant, but we will not uh, interact with you any longer after that. 
and we will make a decision and a recommendation on that case and forward it to town council uh, before this evening is out. So have I missed anything? If not, we will begin with our first case of the uh, public hearing schedule. We start with 17 REZ09, and uh, Ms. Dry is presenting that this evening. Good evening, board. Uh, for your consideration is a request to rezone one acre approximately at 7425 Wake Road. The site is highlighted here in yellow. Um, Wake Road is, um, the site is located off of Wake Road just to the west of Green Level Church Road um, and just north of Kitt Creek Road. The site is currently vacant. It's mostly wooded. Uh, there was a detached dwelling on the site, um, which was recently removed, so right now it's um, currently vacant. It's located north of and adjacent to the Village of the Park, Village at the Park townhome neighborhood. You can see that to the south here. The current zoning for the property is R40. Um, the zoning for the property is directly across the streets R40 as well. Um, you can see all of these properties located over here um, without a color are currently in Wake County and do not have town and carry zoning. Um, and the properties adjacent to the east are zoned office research and development. The applicant is requesting to rezone the property to R8 conditional use. Uh, the applicant submitted uh, the application with one zoning condition to limit the use to detached dwellings. Since the town council public hearing, the applicant has added additional conditions to dedicate right of way and to limit the use to a maximum of two dwellings. So to illustrate um, what the condition would look like, this, this map shows uh, the site adjacent to Wake Road. Uh, a survey of the site shows that the property line for the site actually extends to the center line of Wake Road, which is approximately along this line here. So to um, dedicate right away in, um, in compliance with the town of Cary's uh, uh, plan, the applicant's proposing to dedicate 35 feet, which is approximately um, where this red dash line is located. Uh, staff has evaluated the rezoning with aspects um, to, of the Cary Community Plan. Um, the aspects of the evaluation included looking at the, the uh, plan's policies and the future growth framework map designation. Some of the policies that were found to be applicable dealt with infill, um, increase in housing choices, looking at um, the use and the zoning within the neighborhood designation, it's in the mixed neighborhood. Also looking at Wake Road, which is designated as a collector avenue. This is a map of the Town of Cary's future growth framework map. Uh, the site is indicated here in dark pink, which uh, is the color indication for the mixed neighborhood area. The mixed neighborhood is described as a neighborhood that has a substantial variety in housing types, unit sizes, lot sizes, and densities. You can see the neighborhood designation actually changes just to the north. Um, these properties to the north are designated as business and industrial park. An example of a neighborhood in the mixed neighborhood category is the Amberley uh, neighborhood, which is master planned. It contains a variety of housing, lot sizes, densities. Um, and uh, there are uh, sometimes allowances for non-residential uses on the edges of res residential areas. According to the Town of Cary GIS maps, the site is not impacted by stream buffers. According to the Parks, Recreation, Cultural Resources Facilities Master Plan, um, there, the site is not designated for parkland. Um, there is a street side trail which would be located to the east of the site on Green Level Church Road. According to the town of Cary, um, the move chapter of the Cary Community Plan, this site is located along a collector avenue, um, which is identified here in uh, blue. The closest thoroughfares include uh, Green Level Church Road to the um, east. 
So to talk a little bit more about what a collector avenue means, um, this is an excerpt from the MOVE chapter of the Cary Community Plan. Collector avenues are designed to have limited curb cuts and driveways are held to a minimum along collector avenues. Uh, this is just a zoom in a little bit closer so you can see again um, Wake Road, which was previously a rural road and is newly designated as the Collector Avenue status. So before the public hearing, uh, there was a neighborhood meeting held with the site um, on March 15th here at the town hall. There were approximately five attendees at this meeting. Um, there were some concerns voiced about potential loss of trees, specifically uh, from the people that live at the village of the park. Um, some questions about the Cary Community Plan, just in general in the area, and also questions about the future um, designation of Wake Road. At the public hearing, um, there, uh, there was no one to speak other than the applicant. Um, the council did share some concerns that with the application at that time, <coughs> there was right of way dedication involved. So they did con share concerns that if the rezoning was approved, it could be developed with that right of way dedication. Um, so since the public hearing, the applicant has added new conditions to dedicate right-of-way and then also limit the number of lots to two in, a, in, in, um, in an attempt to also address the number of driveway cuts that would be on Wake Road. Um, so with that, staff has reviewed the case against the policies of the Imagine Cary Community Plan. Uh, further, staff has shared the case with the Town of Cary Development Review Committee and has formulated a preliminary recommendation for approval. This recommendation is a reflection of various departments in the town of Cary, and it is a preliminary recommendation, and it may change following um, if there's any additional information um, that's heard tonight at the public hearing um, and further changes to the application. Um, so since this is a public hearing tonight, properties within 800 feet of the subject site were notified. Property was posted with public hearing signs. Illegal ads were placed in accordance with the Town of Cary Land Development Ordinance. This concludes staff's presentation. The applicant is here to share comments, and following the public hearing, staff will be available for questions. Thank you. Thank you. The first person we shall hear from in this public hearing is the applicant. Good evening, one and all. My name is Anant Narayanan. Myself and my wife, Harini, own the subject property at 7425 Wake Road. I will try to keep my comments brief because most of what I wanted to say have already been said by Ms. Katie Dry. Um, the land is currently zoned as R40, and we're requesting that it be rezoned as an R8 property. I want to bring the attention of uh, the committee here to a couple of items about the lot. One I want to bring to the attention, the size of the lot. The lot is very differently sized. As you can see, the west end is really, really narrow, and the east end is very wide, and the property has more than 440 feet of road frontage, which is pretty significant for a property that's deeded for uh, one acre. <coughs> also, the property is deeded an acre, and uh, as Ms. Uh, Katie Dry pointed out, a portion of the property actually extends into the Wake Road DOT currently has an easement for 30 feet. Uh, <coughs> so with respect to any, any rezoning applications, I think there are three major conditions, I mean considerations. One is, is the request consistent with what the carry envisions for that region uh, for development. Second is how does that uh, request impact traffic. And third is uh, <coughs> about uh, right of way and future development. Um, so when, I, when we went into uh, when I went, went into the uh, public hearing, the only condition we had was that the land use would be uh, limited to detached dwelling, and the town of uh, town council had some concerns about right of way and also about <coughs> the number of road cuts, and rightly so. Uh, there were no major concerns other than the loss of trees during the public hearing. We'll see what other you know, public, you know, comments are after this. Um, so with re respect to the land use, I think there were no concerns. I mean, it's a mixed neighborhood. Uh, it increases the scope uh, for different kind of uh, residential units. This being an R8, 
being subdivided into an R8 increases the land density, so it provides different kinds of land densities in the mixed neighborhood. So as far as the land use goes, it's uh, consistent with the vision that CARI has for this region. Uh, in terms of uh, right-of-way, so currently the land is deeded uh, for an acre and the land extends into acre. <coughs> so after hearing the concerns from the town council, uh, we, the applicants, decided that we will provide a 35 feet right-of-way from the center of Wake Road, which is consistent uh, with what the town, uh, you know, t rules and regulations of the towns. So I want to bring to your consideration that considering the size, uh, the shape of the property, uh, so a 35 feet uh, right-of-way is about a third of the property itself, so that's significant. <coughs> uh, but we do believe that we want to grow with the town and not compete with the town, so we're very happy to do what we're doing. I think we're doing the right thing. Uh, the other thing I want to mention about is uh, the other concern that uh, the town council had was also about the number of road cuts. So to alleviate that concern, we added another condition that said that we will limit the number of subdivisions to two units. That way, you know, for a 4, 440 feet uh, road frontage, two uh, road cuts would not be, uh, you know, terribly uh, disruptive for the traffic flow. <coughs> so... Uh, we strongly believe that we have addressed all concerns that the town may possibly have about this property. And uh, we believe that the planning and zoning and also the town council will uh, favorably uh, request, you know, decide on our request. Uh, last but not the least, I'd also like to thank the staff, uh, especially Ms. Katie Drive, for guiding uh, us through this process. Be happy to answer any questions or, you know, come back for any comments. Thanks for the opportunity. Good night. Thank you. Would anyone like to speak to us in this public hearing and address this particular case? Uh, put your hand up or just stand up to let me know you're on your way. I see no one approaching, so I'm going to call the public hearing to a close, and we can now ask questions of the staff. So if anyone has any questions, just go right ahead. I, I just had a question about this road cut situation. Um, I don't, if this is a collector road, it seems that there's going to be a good, expected to be a good bit of traffic on this road at some point as things develop further on. What is a reasonable amount of, um, is there any sort of ratio of distance and number of cuts within the range of this 440 foot frontage that would be uh, something to measure against? I'd like to call um, um, someone from our transportation facilities down to talk a little bit more about that. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I'm Priyatham Khanna with Transportation Facilities. Um, right now, we do not have any forecasts on uh, how much traffic would be on Wake Road in the future. But since it is a collector avenue, uh, it is uh, reasonable to say that, you know, driveway cuts uh, spaced between 200 and 250 feet are, are, are reasonable. And uh, this particular section, at this point, we're envisioning it would have a median, so it would be a right and right out in the future at some point uh, when the properties to the north and properties to the east are developed. It has, it has a greater uh, commercial nature than residential nature, so that, that's what we were, we were envisioning. Okay. Anything else? I have a question for the applicant. So, so, so I understand uh, you're, you're not a developer. You're looking to this property as perhaps a home for yourself? Yes, sir. And then the other lot would be a home that you might sell or, or, or keep your family or do something like that. So this is a property you're looking to live on yourself. Right? Absolutely. Got it, got it. <clears throat> and this is your first time going through this whole development process? Absolutely. So I'm sure you've learned a lot. It's been an amazing uh, especially experience. Especially from Ms. Dry here, who's, she knows a lot, so Absolutely. I'm sure you've picked up a lot of things. Uh, you, you understand what the shape of this lot, given the 35-foot uh, uh, right-of-way dedication, which you're doing, which was very appreciated by the city. Uh, but then you also have the 30-foot setbacks from the front, the 20-foot setback from the rear. And when you go through that triangular lot, it's going to really limit your building envelope within that triangle. I already and have you, my drawings on. prepared out for two houses. So you've looked through all the geometry of that, and that all is going to work for you for your your plans absolutely. And needs. I actually actually have some drawings on my computer. I know exactly where my house is going to be, exactly where my driveway is going to be. Got it. Got it. Okay. So all of this is going to 
no surprises for you as you go forward of what you're expecting on developing this lot? Sure. Okay. Yes. Right. And, and Ms. Dry, if I could ask you a question. Thank you. Could, could you also just speak to clarify uh, on that process related to the uh, dedication of roadway? How does that occur and get triggered? I know we've had some examples in the past. But could you just clarify that once again? Sure. Um, so the way the conditions worded um, would be that any plat that divides a subject property shall depict an offer for dedication of 35 feet of right of way as shown on Exhibit A attached here too. Um, so in your agenda packet, you should have um, a copy of Exhibit A, which is a survey of the, the lot showing uh, the approximate location of the 35 feet from the center line. Um, so what that means is um, if and when the applicant chooses, if this gets approved first, and if and when they choose to subdivide that property, um, when the plat is submitted, that would trigger the need for the right-of-way dedication. Um, so the right-of-way dedication would not kick in until um, the owner of the property chooses to subdivide it in accordance with what would be allowed with R8. That's very helpful. Thank you very much. Sure. And we're just simply dedicating the right of way. There's no obligation for developing that frontage because it's. Um... So, um, if the applicant um, sub submits the plat, the right of way would be dedicated, and um, there would be a requirement for a site plan, um, which would require uh, road improvements. Okay, so they will come. And the applicant does have the option to, if if the road improvements are a burden to come to the council and request um, be in lieu of a certain amount. Mm -hmm. Any questions on this side? No. Would anyone like to make a motion? Well, I'd be glad, I'd, yeah, I'd be glad to. Um, you know, with these conditions, I've, I've, I've gotten, I think, very comfortable for this. So I'd, I'd make a, a motion to approve that uh, the board forward case number 17 REZ09 to the Town Council with a rec recommendation for approval as it is consistent with the comprehensive plan and all other actual plans and is reasonable and in the public interest for the reasons discussed. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion you'd like? No, I just think that uh, uh, what was most important to me was the, um, the condition to, to limit to two dwellings. I mean, I think what Victor was pointing out earlier was very important it's a kind of a it's a difficult shaped lot but you know um, there's other things that could go back and back there that would be could be more office or industrial in nature so you know as far as for the development behind it I think it would probably blend in mm -hmm. fairly well excellent anything that I, I would agree with his comments all right then all in favor of uh, the motion please say aye aye, aye. are there any opposed say no that motion carries unanimously. Our next public hearing uh, and the same rules apply is uh, actually a comprehensive plan amendment, which we thought we wouldn't see for a long time. But uh, it's the Cary Parkway extension. Hello, Ms. Whitman. Good evening. Um, OK, uh, good evening, board. Uh, tonight's public hearing is on the proposed removal of the planned Cary Parkway extension from the Cary Community Plan. The pro proposed extension runs from North Harrison Avenue in Cary to Trinity Road in Raleigh as a planned two-lane roadway with right-of-way reservation for six lanes. This plan amendment also includes removal of two proposed collector roads affiliated with the Cary Parkway extension. The Cary Parkway extension is a legacy project carried over from the Capital Area Metropolitan Planning Organization's 1997 thoroughfare plan to Cary's first comprehensive transportation plan adopted in 2001. Today, the project remains in Campo's long range comprehensive transportation plan but is not a part of its fiscally constrained metropolitan transportation plan, making it ineligible for state or federal funding. Recognizing that Cary's plans are evolving documents, staff advised council 
on the, upon the adoption of Cary Community Plan on January 24, 2017, that we would be continuing to look at several issues, including this decades-old proposed extension to evaluate if it remained appropriate. In reviewing the Imagine Carry Move policies, several provide direction in this case. Policy three pertains to the link between land use and transportation. Policy four touches on the issue of priority and discusses the need to maximize transportation investments by focusing on the highest need areas where projects yield the most benefit. Finally, policy six focuses on the need to improve bike and pedestrian mobility, particularly in areas that seem the least bike ped friendly currently. The recent Imagine Carry planning process also recognized that transportation trends and technology will impact decision making and future travel in Cary. The MOVE chapter of the plan in particular highlighted the gradual decline in vehicle miles traveled since its peak in 2005 and the dawn of advancing technologies such as Uber, the autonomous vehicle, and even locally with the passing of the Wake Transit Plan, these all serve as examples of external influences that may affect how we make transportation network decisions moving forward. The Cary Parkway Extension Study offered a unique opportunity to partner with SAS the primary property owner along the proposed corridor. Kimley Horn & Associates, a professional engineering firm, was hired to do the analysis and two scenarios were studied, one with and one without the future road connection. Based on results of the analysis indicating no significant change in impact to the adjacent roadways with the road, the extension was ultimately not recommended by the consultant. Staff concurs with the study recommendations and is recommending continued dialogue on more targeted network enhancements as a follow-up action. Should this plan amendment be approved, staff will work with Raleigh and Campo staff to assess, to reassess the planned roadways that are classified in the Trinity Road area. All property owners within 800 feet of the proposed Cary Parkway extension and adjacent collector road alignments were notified via letter. Signs were also posted along the corridor. Staff has received a handful of calls. Primarily, primary issues include concerns about noise and safety with existing traffic on Trinity Trenton roads, uh, concern with the removal of the Trinity Road realignment between Trenton Road and I-40, and questions about future SAS development plans. Staff has not received expressed opposition to the removal of the Cary Parkway extension between North Harrison Avenue and Trinity Road. A public hearing was held on May 25th at the town council meeting. Three speakers spoke in support of the amendment two residents, and one representative from Cary Academy. The dates on the screen uh, include uh, the steps to, in the process so far and, and the next step in the process. And uh, before I turn it over to you, Mr. Evangelista, for the public hearing, I'd kind of like to take a minute to introduce our partner in the, pro uh, in the process. Uh, so SAS partnered with us in this, and um, Chad Ruley is available here and is going to um, provide a, a little bit of information uh, on the project. Great. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Chad Ruley. I'm the manager of construction operations for SAS Institute. Um, so first of all, I'd just like to say that, you know, we fairly appreciate the town's willingness to reevaluate the proposed extension based on current traffic data. Um, it's really encouraging to hear words like this is an evolving document, um, which, which 
makes sense. Um, we, uh, we read the traffic study, uh, which I believe is in the uh, packet, and after plugging in the current data, uh, as um, staff just reported, the traffic study found no reduction in the volume on the adjacent roadways. So, um, you know, this is going to come at a cost and uh, disturbance, and we feel like that cost and disturbance um, to build this road section seems, well, seems to no longer add value to the community, uh, which is ultimately what we're trying to achieve. Um, Last month, we also heard uh, from our surrounding residential and uh, um, educational neighbors. Uh, our neighbors expressed concern with the installation of the future ro roadway, uh, primarily uh, as it would disturb, well, let's call it what they are, they're very beautiful North Cary properties. Um, and I gotta tell you, you know, that's, that's a rare treasure. And it's right here in Cary, we have that treasure. Um, and I gotta tell you, after Living in the D.C. area, or I should say the surround the area surrounding D.C., uh, I've seen firsthand what you know basically wild development can lead to, which is why I'm really pleased uh, to live here in Cary and to work here in Cary, a town whose representatives you know take the time and energy to develop the area wisely and deliberately because it does. It takes time, it takes energy, um, and uh, this approach it makes good social sense and it makes good economic sense. Um, so in the spirit of making good sense, and uh, based on the traffic study, a uh, recommendation of staff uh, and um, desires expressed by the surrounding neighbors, SAS fully supports the removal of the Cary Parkway extension from the town's transportation plan. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. And um, uh, I'll let you, I'll turn it over to you, but just to also let you know the consultant is here uh, to answer questions after the public hearing if you have any. Thanks a lot. The public hearing is now open for anyone else who would like to speak on this particular topic. Is there anyone? Ah. Good evening. Um, my name is Debbie Reichel. I am the Chief Financial Officer for Cary Academy. Uh, we want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak here tonight. Uh, the uh, Cary Parkway extension has been a concern of the school for many, many years. So we were very pleased to see that the uh, town has been willing to reevaluate this and take a look at it and see uh, its viability going forward. And uh, based on the evaluation, um, we want to just let you know that we do fully support the recommendation of the staff to go ahead and remove, excuse me, remove the Cary Parkway extension from the plan. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Uh, another one coming down. Hello, thank you for this opportunity to speak on um, this change to the comprehensive plan amendment. My name is Heather Dutra. I'm a new resident to Cary. I live, now I've discovered within 800 feet of the proposed extension. I'm also from the DC metro area and um, we moved here, my husband and I, because of the beautiful tree canopy that Cary has. The only noise that we hear currently are the sound of birds, which is incredible. So I would like to um, support this change and the um, preservation of the natural buffer around our new neighborhood. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing nobody rise, I shall call an end to this public hearing as well. We can now ask questions of the applicant, which is us, and the, um, and the consultant, if you like. Does anyone have any questions? I'll start on this side of the room. I'm oh, starting down here. Okay. Um, if, if there was no action taken on this, this would just continue to sit, correct? I mean, there's 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 nothing imminent. There's no funding to, for this road extension. There's, it's just a marker today. Um, the, that is correct. Uh, there there is no funding for it. It's not eligible for any funding source. Um, the impact that it does have is, uh, for instance, if um, plans come in and uh, they are they approach the area that is designated on the plan, um, then we have to take a look at the reservation of right of way and things. Okay. Chuck. 
the same. I don't have any questions. I, I have a process question. Uh, since we're usually reviewing and discussing things about zoning, but here we are talking about a road or an amendment to the plan related to a road. Is, is this going through the process right now because it was set out in the approval of the overall carry plan in January as just one special case to be considered and, and studied uh, with, with the folks at SAS and so forth? Or, or is this representing a, a, a process or a, a, a precedent template, if you will, that if there are to be any other requests by property owners or developers in the future, they might follow the same path to then have a road extended or a road removed or a road widened or narrowed or changed from collector to this or gosh knows, you know, wiggle a road 50 feet here to a board property line uh, or something like that. Is, is this a special case or is this setting up a precedent template for future changes to the plan reg regarding roads? Um, this is specific to the plan, so it was included in the plan as a recommendation to, to further evaluate and study it. Uh, you will see, I think, some others in the future as well, um, a green level church road. So there's a few, I believe, that you're going to see in the future. And then, of course, we have things that come up just uh, out of regular business uh, that we identify that might change within the plan. Uh, but as, as far as uh, sort of a precedence, uh, what, what this is, is is a response to something specific, mm -hmm. um, the plan and, and the, the language with that is within the plan to further study it. And the only other additional were, would be those that are a part of that or those that we come across in the regular course of business. So the going forward business, once we resolve this, and the couple that were part of the plan approval back in January, mm -hmm. Going forward, if a property owner were to pop up and say, oh, I just observed this line going through my property or it's much bigger than I thought or whatever, there will be an accommodation or a process for which those things can get presented, maybe studied, and go through like we just went through Town of Cary Council, us, and then for approval. Is, is that uh, if Where anybody, we're headed? if anybody contacted the town, we would take the information. Uh, generally, as it relates to road network um, things, there's a, a a bigger process beyond our boundaries. So, so we would begin the engaging in the process of discussing with the capital area MPO. In this case, it happens to be bordering with Raleigh. So, it, we would, you know, if if it was in a location that was adjacent to another community, we would start to engage in those um, conversations first uh, to, you know, get an understanding of how the the uh, overall network works. Got it. So, I guess it would be fair to characterize the roads that are in our plan today are are there because that's what we planned, but they're not, if you will, cast in stone. If there were to be new information or new data or something occur, we, we, we have a process to be able to go through. To, oh, to we always change. have processes to, that's, that's to be able to reevaluate what's in there, uh, change, make changes as appropriate. Yes. That's good to know. Thank you. Are there any questions at all? Well, yeah. Is the consultant going to, can we ask the consultant? We can ask the questions, sure. Yeah. He just didn't want to speak at it. In the public hearing, but yeah, it's yeah. part of the applicant process. Good evening, Mike Horn with Kimley Horn and Associates. I'm a licensed engineer here in the state of North Carolina, having practiced traffic engineering for over 35 years. So happy to answer any questions you may have. Yeah, the, the one question I had the 11,000 trips per day. Uh, that was projected as being a relatively no, low number there would therefore not justify uh, keeping this line. What assumptions were made with regard to um, improvements on Trinity Road um, when you came up with the 11,000 number? All right, let's, let's then step back and answer this question. When we got involved with this, this was a question of do we really need, you know, Cary Parkway extension? And let me read to you from your own thoroughfare plan what the comment states. And this goes back to the one question of, you know, can roads be taken on or off? But on your specific, you know, um, uh, plan, your thoroughfare plan, let's call it, uh, we come back and we read 120 feet of right-of-way shall be 
acquired or dedicated that the, that expansion can be possible if proven necessary by further study. And that's what I've provided, the further study. And that's what happened with SAS. So this is how this, this came on, on, you know, to this point. That note's not on every road, all right? So most roads, as we see on this plan, are there, I'm not gonna say set in stone, but they're, they're gonna be needed to be able to meet the transportation plan. In this case, we looked at the year 2040. That is what the latest model, traffic model from the capital area MPO has provided. When we pulled the model up, the first thing, and we were rather surprised, the first thing we saw was the road's not on the model. It's not in the 2040 plan. Now, you heard from the staff that it's in, um, it, it's in the ultimate, but in that fis fiscally constrained model, what is that now, 23 years from now, there's no funding for it. So it's not in the current model. So what we had to do to come back and come up with this 11,000 vehicles a day was to insert it into the model. And yes, so when we inserted the road in, we found 11,000 you know, vehicles a day. We, typically, traffic engineer, I look at that and go, hmm, that could be some, you know, that's, that's not 1,000, you know, it's not 50,000, but it's in the neighborhood of volume that we would, we're concerned with. That's why we ran the second analysis, and that's that volume to capacity ratio that uh, in the maps that you have in front of you. And what we found is with the, with the VC maps, the volume to capacity maps, there was no, no, no difference at all with the surrounding roads with or without Cary Parkway extension. And that's why we were able to come back and make the recommendation. I mean, to be very honest, I've been doing this for 35 years. I'm not sure I've ever recommended a road to come off. I'm usually the other way around. I'm recommending to put the roads on. But in this case, it was very clear it made no change whatsoever, not even, and with it not on the model, it just, it, it made no sense to be there. Well, my question is, if you're assuming that there will be no improvements on Trinity Road ever, then that number probably makes sense. What if you assume that the uh, long-term improvements to Trinity Road are made? Does well, that change your number? No, this, the connection that we put in showed that the, um, would connect to Trinity Road. Now understand Trinity Road, but when it crosses over Trenton and locates to Trinity, there's a two lane bridge over, you know, 440. So you're assuming Trinity Road would not be improved? I, I think it, I th well, if, if Cary Parkway up with 11, extension, if, you assume Trinity Road Park, would be exactly as it Cary is Parkway today. If Cary Parkway extension is not on the model today because of fiscally, you know, constrained, the widening of that bridge on Trinity Road is also not in the plan. And that widening of that bridge is very expensive. So, I mean, year 2040, 23 years from now, you know, 11,000 cars, I mean, understand that it, it made no difference in any of the a significant difference at all in the roadway surrounding, you know, with or without it. How often is that plan reviewed? The Campo model, they're always updating it. The, the, the staff of the Campo, uh, the Capital Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, they're always updating it. It can change from any year, right? Could, yes. It, it's officially changed every four years. They have a planning process that runs on a four-year cycle. And, um, uh, but they do have two modelers on staff that are cut because it's such a large area that are constantly evaluating and then it, uh, and leading up to the official changes. And things that weren't funded four years ago suddenly become funded, correct? They are in the process right now and, um, and this roadway was not coming close to the um, fiscally constrained plan again. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you for that uh, explanation. If there's no uh, no further questions, then uh, perhaps a motion would be in order. At I'd this like point. to make a motion. Dean McGinn. So given this is an amendment, let's use our cheat sheet here. Uh, there isn't really a case number, so I, can, so I can just say plan amendment. We'll do that. 
Okay, we're good. So I'd like to make a motion to approve. I move that the board forward the Cary Parkway Extension Comprehensive Plan Amendment uh, to the town council with a recommendation for approval to amend the Cary Community Plan as proposed. Is there a second? I second. Any uh, further discussion on that uh, behind your motion? I do recall an interesting discussion late in December night a couple months ago about this whole topic, and I'm just so pleased to see that uh, I think I was the sole dissenting vote at that time, but I'm pleased to see we actually spent some time to study it and come up with what I think is a thoughtful database recommendation. So the process works, so I'm all for that. Anything to add? Um, I, I think what I would say is in full disclosure, I work at SAS, so I'm familiar with the concerns about why this road has been on the plan and wants to be removed. Um, but also just looking at our history um, of the last 20 years, whenever this was first designed, certainly there's been an extensive amount of growth in the path of the road um, that was probably not necessarily anticipated when this road was marked into the plan. And obviously the reality of the situation has changed the landscape considerably. And I can only imagine what kind of disruption would take place if this road were to be built through. So it seems to me that it is not serving the population that currently exists there very well. So I'm pleased to vote against continuing that. Any other discussion on this? Um, I've, I've, I struggled with this one, I'll be real honest. But, you know, I, I, I feel favorable to it. But, you know, this is so far in the future. Part of me is like, why, why is it a big deal now? But I do understand from a planning standpoint and based on, you know, what the consultant said in the town, um, it probably makes sense now, but I also know something this could change, you know, back the other way 10 years from now or whatever, depending on what really happens down there. So it's, I just view it as a placeholder, and it probably makes sense to, to, to do this at this point in time. I'll just throw my two cents in at the end. And, and, and like Victor, I, I had been of the mind that we need to, be very careful when we take something off a map. It's pretty, pretty easy to pull something off a map. It's really, really hard to put it back on a map later. But I'm very satisfied with all the work that's been done to this is not a willy-nilly decision. It's, it's been studied fairly extensively and recommended by several professionals, including our own staff. So I, I'm very comfortable with, uh, with the conclusion drawn and supporting it. No one else has anything. Uh, would all those in favor of this motion please say aye. aye? Aye. Any opposed say no. That motion carries unanimously. And since it very rarely happens, I want to say thank you for pronouncing my name the same way I do. <laughs> <laughs> so few people do that. I believe we have reached the end of our agenda. We don't have any cases without a public hearing. We have no new or old business. So if someone would like to make a motion to adjourn, we could adjourn. I would gladly so move. Any second to that, please? I'm glad to second. All those in favor of adjourning say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you and good evening. Carrie TV. Visit the Town of Carrie website at townofcarrie.org.